the chord. All right, so today's notes, we're looking at mid-segments, and a mid-segment of a triangle is a segment, if you look at the word, mid and segment, it's a segment that connects the midpoints. It's where the mid comes from. Of two sides of a triangle. So over here, we took the midpoint M, so that means AM is congruent to BM, and the midpoint N, so that BN is congruent to NC, and MN would be the mid-segment of this triangle. Okay? I would encourage you to highlight the mid-segment in questions that have a mid-segment. Oops, that's really large. So this is our mid-segment, and that's opposite side AC. And there's a certain relationship that exists between MN and AC. So the next star says the properties of our mid-segment. So our mid-segment in this picture is MN. The properties are that it's half of AC. It's half of the side that's opposite. Okay, so if AC was, um, let's say, 8, half of 8 MN would be 4. Okay, if you want to avoid working with the fractions, you can say that um, AC is equal to twice MN, work in the other direction, so you can avoid working with the 1 half. And then the last relationship is that MN is parallel to AC. So we have to think about all of our parallel line properties. So this segment MN is parallel to AC. So let's just make a note right here of all of our parallel line properties. So when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, we have, let's say, X, that's equal to corresponding angles congruent, alternate interior angles congruent, and alternate exterior. So all those angles that have an X are congruent, and all the ones with an O are congruent. And we know that X plus O is equal to 180. So I'm looking at the examples. Let's start with 1 and 2, which just says find the value of X. As I mentioned, I would in each question highlight, see if I can make that smaller, highlight your mid-segment in the side opposite because the mid-segment is half, okay, of the side that's opposite, or you can say the longer side is double the shorter. So the shorter side, so x here, number one, is going to be one half of 34, which is 17. Over here, x is on the longer segment, so x is double 12, so x is equal to 24. Down at the bottom, we start to look at some of the angles. So we want to remember the parallel line properties because the mid-segment's parallel. So I'm just going to copy that diagram from above. Okay. So you can even extend these as well in your picture. So here's the two parallel lines. Cut by this transversal, each side of the triangle is like a different transversal. So if this is 80, this is also 80 degrees. So x is 80. And then if this is 50, this is 50. And then you can look at this linear pair right here. Looks like your protractor again. And there's 180 degrees. So y plus 50 is equal to 180. Subtract the 50. And y is equal to 130. You can also remember, so these two angles are between the parallel lines. So these two angles here are same side interior, which are supplementary, if you can remember that property of parallel lines. But here, x is 80 and y is 130. And then the last one on the front, I know, well, we, we should have talked about in each case how we know we have a mid-segment. And I know we have a mid-segment because this must be a midpoint because this segment's congruent to that segment. And this must be a midpoint on that side because that segment's congruent to that segment. So using corresponding angles, the y would be equal to the 54. I'm going to use corresponding angles here and slide up the 78. And then the three interior angles of this little triangle up here add up to 180. So x plus 54 plus 78 is equal to 180. So when you add the two 
like terms, x plus 132 is 180, subtract the 132, and x is equal to 48 degrees. On the back side, it says in the accompanying diagram figure, or in the accompanying figure instead of diagram, DE, EF, and DF are mid segments. So DE is a mid segment, and it says the length of DE is 5. So if this is 5, this side opposite must be 10. Because it's the longer, it's double. The next mid segment was EF. So EF is here. They do not give us the length of EF, but that goes with AB. And they do give us the length of AB. So if this is 12, the smaller would be half 6. And then last, the mid segment DF, I'll highlight in pink. That goes with side BC, or its opposite. So we're given BC is 8, so half of this would be 4. Okay, so on the left side, we found DF, that was when we just found, which was 4. EF from the picture we found is 6. AC we found is 10. And then it wants AF. Well, AF is here. And since this is a midpoint, this is equal to this. And if the whole length is 10, this must be 5 and 5. So AF is 5. In number 6, find the value of x. Well, we have a mid-segment, so it's good to highlight that. And you can say that the longer is double the shorter, or you can use half. In this case, I would say that PR, the longer, is double ST with the algebra. So you can avoid working with the half. So PR, which is 2x plus 4, is equal to 2 times 12. So 2x plus 4 is 24. And then subtract the 4 divided by 2. We get x equals 10. We're not given a mid-segment in 7. We're given AD and BD. Without even being told that we had a mid-segment, I know this is a midpoint because of these dashed lines right there. So without knowing anything else in the picture, I already know those are equal because of those marks. So 38 is equal to 3x minus 13. So add the 13. 11 carry the 1. 51 divided by 3. And x is equal to 17. The last one we are given uh, the mid segment. So I am going to highlight and I'm going to say that the larger is double the smaller. So the larger is, in this case, UL. So UL is equal to double the smaller, so we don't have to work with the one half. So replace UL with 3x plus 4, and that's equal to twice x plus 4. Distribute, leaving the left side alone get 2x plus 8, subtract the 2x, since I'm running out of room, I'm going to subtract 4 as well, those cancel, those cancel, and x is equal to 4. Now why, okay, I knew this was a mid-segment because this was congruent to this, and this was congruent to this, so that must be a mid-segment as it's the segment connecting the midpoints. Because it has the two dashed lines, I know these two expressions are equal, so I set them equal to and then solve for y. So I'm going to add the 1 and subtract the 2y all in the same step again. So 11 plus 1 is 12. Those cancel. 5y minus 2y is 3y. Divide by 3, and y is 4.